Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhousehomeboon.com and today I'm going to share with you the process I use to make my gluten-free sourdough starter. I've had a ton of requests on my blog well before all of this craziness happened and sourdough became the most popular thing going on the internet for how to make a gluten-free sourdough starter. I've been maintaining my wheat sourdough starter for the last nine years and I've never really gone into the world of gluten-free sourdough baking or anything at all. So I've done quite a bit of research and then I've also spent the last two weeks cultivating my own gluten-free sourdough starter. It is bubbly and active and so now I have a few things to share about that. Now I do wanna say that I'm not a total expert on this. As I've just mentioned to you, I've only been working with gluten-free sourdough starter for about two weeks now. So I'm brand new, I've only tried a few different recipes. I plan to experiment with it, make more recipes, but my experience so far is limited. The process for making a gluten-free sourdough starter is a lot like making a wheat sourdough starter. In fact, it's basically the exact same. The only difference, of course, is that you use a gluten-free flour. Now, the options for gluten-free flour that have success or that I've read about people having success with online are teff, sorghum, buckwheat, oat, white rice and brown rice flour. Also, I did see some tutorials from Bob's Red Mill and from King Arthur's Flour. So both of those companies on their website have how to use their gluten-free flour. It's their measure for measure gluten-free flour. It's a blend of different things. You can make a starter with that as well. For me, I personally found some buckwheat flour on Amazon. The reason I did that is I was maybe gonna try some of the other options, but whenever I went to buy this, everybody was sold out of everything because of what is going on in the world. So I was able to find one company who could ship me some buckwheat flour really quickly, and that's what I went with. Now I've heard people say that they get a more bubbly result with the rice flours, so the brown rice, the white rice flours. Another option is to do half buckwheat and half brown rice flour. You could do half sorghum, half brown rice. A lot of flours work and you can experiment. I have had success with my buckwheat starter. I will say that it took a little while to get it nice and bubbly and active. It didn't take off really quickly and that might be something that if you add a little brown rice flour, you maybe could avoid. So here's the process that I did. On day one, I started by taking a quarter cup of buckwheat flour and a quarter cup of filtered water. Now I use my Berkey water filter. I've done a review on my Berkey water filter. I love it. We've had it for, I believe, eight or nine years now, something like that. They are currently sold out at the time of this recording, but hopefully by the time you're watching it, they won't be. They do have a bundle sale that if they are having it, I will leave a link down in the description box below so that in the future you can check that and find it. Any filtered water will work. It does not have to be a Berkey water. The things you wanna avoid are chlorine because that can actually kill the yeast and bacteria that you're trying to cultivate here. And anything that could be weird in city water, you wanna have your water tested to make sure, but a filtered water will yield the best results. So I added a quarter cup of filtered water to a quarter cup of buckwheat flour, stirred really vigorously, and then just allowed it to sit for 24 hours. Day two, I removed half and then added a quarter cup of flour and a quarter cup of water again. Now the reason for removing half and discarding during building a sourdough starter process is that you want to keep the ratios right. So you wouldn't want to feed a cup of buckwheat starter a quarter cup of buckwheat flour because that wouldn't be enough sustenance for the yeast and bacteria that you're trying to capture and grow in the starter. So you want to keep the ratios right so that you're always feeding about equal parts of the starter that you have, equal parts of the flour. Now here's the thing, I don't like wasting, none of you guys like wasting, especially at times like this. You can put this in your compost, you can give it to your chickens, but I do also have recipes that you can use for sourdough discard. I'm putting together a post over on my blog for regular sourdough starter discard recipes. But for this, you can make sourdough discard pancakes. So take that discard, set it aside in a bowl covered in the refrigerator. And then once you have enough discarded sourdough starter collected together, you can make 
sourdough pancakes. I'll talk more about that recipe in a moment. Day three, I did the same. I removed half and then I fed it with a quarter cup of flour and a quarter cup of water. Day four through seven, I bumped it up to every 12 hour feedings. So it was the same thing. I remove half and do a quarter cup of flour, quarter cup of water, but I did that twice a day. Again, always keeping that ratio about the same. So keeping about the same amount of starter down in the bowl and then feeding it a new fresh supply of flour and water to encourage the yeast to grow. By day seven, it was bubbly and was ready to start experimenting with recipes. Now, if you ever see a liquid layer on top that is dark in color, as you can see from some of my process shots during this uh, whole process, there was a black layer sometimes. Now that is called hooch. And it basically just means that the starter is a little bit hungry and needs a little bit more sustenance. If that happens, you need to increase feedings and give it a little bit more flour. Once the starter is mature, you can start using it. If you don't wanna use it every single day, you can put it in the refrigerator between uses. So if it's out on the counter, you're going to need to feed it every day. If it's in the refrigerator, you can bring it out once a week or once every two weeks and freshen it up by giving it some flour and water. My starter at this point, I kept it on the counter and continued to feed it for about eight or nine days and then I put it in the refrigerator for a bit and then I brought it back out to make some pancakes. So far with this, the only thing that I've made completely gluten-free are the sourdough buckwheat pancakes. I'm working on a gluten-free sourdough bread recipe that I'll be sharing when I get that just right. But to also see if this sourdough starter was active and actually had yeast in it, I made my regular wheat sourdough English muffins, but instead of adding my wheat sourdough starter to the batter, I added this sourdough starter and I did watch the dough rise, but I didn't watch it. The next day, the dough had risen quite a bit. So I know that we have yeast going on in here and the starter has found the right balance and I was able to test that with a recipe. Soon I'll be putting it to the test with a bread recipe. That'll be the real test. Now sometimes a sourdough starter will need to be a little bit more mature before it can rise something as heavy as bread that doesn't have any other leavening agents in it. Whereas things like pancakes and English muffins also have additional baking soda. Now if you're a long time follower of this channel, you probably already know the reason why you would even want to make a sourdough starter, why this is important. In normal wheat starters, it makes the wheat more digestible by reducing the phytic acid. But gluten-free grains and seeds also have phytic acid. They also are high in starch and the same benefits that happen with souring wheat are the same with souring gluten-free grains and seeds. So that is why it is so important. It makes them more digestible. It reduces the starch content because the bacteria, the probiotics in here, pre-digest some starches when the grains and seeds are soured. The purpose of using it in your baked goods is that you are capturing the wild yeast that are in the environment and on the grain that will allow breads to rise and baked goods and so it's a great way to bake without access to yeast. You can find out more about this in my other sourdough videos. A lot of the same concepts apply, even when I'm talking about my wheat sourdough starters to the gluten-free. So I have several videos, I have a QA, and a I have all about my other sourdough starter, and then I have so many recipes. Now the recipes on my channel won't work necessarily for buckwheat. There are some special considerations with gluten-free baking, and so this is a whole new world. Everything applies to the sourdough starter, but as far as the recipes, you can't just take and replace all the flour with um, buckwheat. Now you might be able to use the one-for-one -one flour substitution mixes, I haven't tried it. So I will be hopefully making some more great gluten-free sourdough recipes, but I can't say yet because I haven't done it. All I've done so far are the pancakes and then I put my starter in the English muffins. So hopefully more of that will be coming soon. I'm not very experienced with gluten-free baking. For the sourdough pancakes, I use two cups of buckwheat sourdough starter, two eggs, four tablespoons coconut oil, two tablespoons honey, half a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking soda. 
Then I just fry those up in some butter on my cast iron skillet. I like to add butter and get it really hot. And then whenever the batter hits the cast iron skillet, it almost fries the edges and makes them really crispy. You can also use coconut oil. You could also just use a small amount, but the more fried they are, the better tasting they are. I will have a printable recipe card over on the blog, both for the gluten-free sourdough starter with some of my tips, as well as the sourdough buckwheat pancake recipe. So I will leave links to those down in the description box below. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.